What's up, fan collectors? I'm Skylar Strickland. I'm the owner of the Neon Fan Company. I'm bringing you in tonight. We're gonna unbox this Delray fan. So we have here, this is a factory pre-production prototype. It's a sample of the uh, Delray ceiling fan that is coming up. Um, it's currently August of 2023, as I'm filming this. We're expecting to have units in stock, ready to ship to you uh, around about January of 2024, if all goes according to plan. So we're going to unbox this prototype together with the understanding that uh, there may be some slight differences from what you see here versus what you get as a customer if you buy one of these fans. We reserve the right to make improvements. So first such improvement will be the box. This sample comes in a plain brown box, as you can see here. The final version is going to come in a beautiful box. If you buy one of these, you're gonna get a really nice box art. It's gonna be a gorgeous box, heavily inspired by the 1895 series box, the Emerson 1895 series. It's the only sneak preview you're getting in the box art. So when you go in and you open your Delray box, everything comes inside. The very first thing that caught my attention was of course the blade irons. So we have a set of four. This is easily, easily the most custom part of this fan. These lovely polished chrome blade irons, we are quite proud of. They have our name stamped directly in the back. It's made as part of the mold. Florida Fan Works, it's the parent company of the Neon Fan Company. 15 degrees, we are very proud of the blade pitch on these. This side right here says, thank you, Dan. And that is in honor of Dan Newman. So Dan was kind enough to loan me his original copy of the Panasonic blade iron that uh, dates the early 1980s. Uh, and I was able to send this to my manufacturing partner overseas and have it computer modeled. And the new version that is made in 2023 is a scaled up version in every dimension so that the geometry is the same, but these can accommodate the large surface area blades that we use to move massive amounts of air on the Delray. So your blade irons here, they're made out of cast aluminum, which is extremely lightweight. Most blade irons are made out of zinc. We went with aluminum because it's so lightweight, it allows the fan to spin at a higher RPM and move more air. Aluminum is very strong. Remember, they make airplanes out of aluminum. This is a 15 degree reverse pitch on it. You can see just how steep that pitch is. Isn't that just gorgeous right there? I just love it. And you'll notice it actually has one, two, three, four mounting holes for the blade. Okay? So you get a set of four of those. Next are the blades themselves. You get a set of four blades. So the blades are clear plexiglass, four holes as previously mentioned to mount the blade iron. This is what the blade looks like. The tip is a, a rounded tip on the far end. It's got a design on the motor end. There is no top or bottom side of the blades. They are ambidextrous. This pattern, this reeded pattern, these lines, um, it's embossed into both the top and bottom sides of the blade, so it doesn't matter whether you have the blade one way versus the other. And the blade irons do positively lock to the blade so that you know you get good balance on those. Okay, so set that aside. Uh, next up, what do we have here? We have the mounting bracket. So we have a standard stamp steel mounting bracket here, grounding wire attached. Very thick, very heavy duty noise isolation up the top there. Uh, one feature that I was sure to include was this hook right here. The purpose of that hook, if you were mounting this fan without the down rod, if you want to flush mount your fan, where the canopy just mounts directly into the top of the motor, then you can hang your fan by the canopy right here and it frees up your two hands to do the wiring and then you mount the canopy to the bracket and bim bam boom, off to the races. We have a lower canopy. It's a lower canopy. It's about what you'd expect. Uh, this, this may change, or it may stay the same. Fan comes with two down rods included. We come with a four inch down rod uh, and a 12 inch down rod. This is the 12 inch down rod right here. We went with half inch down rod because we wanted the vintage 1980s, 1990s look. Polished chrome. We have a very standard blade balancing kit right there, and then a very standard screw and hardware pack. 
Now inside this pack are the three pull chain medallions. We do anticipate that on the final, the medallions will be pre-attached at the factory and will no longer be included in the hardware pack. So we have this obelisk medallion. This is for the reverse pull chain. Uh, this particular design, very popular in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Uh, at one point it was standard on all or almost all Hampton Bay fans. This is the shape of a standard A19 light bulb. This is the shape of a four blade fan. And these respectively go to the fan and light pull chains. Um, these are made out of metal, they are cast, and they are chrome electroplated. Polished mirror chrome finish. Nothing brushed. So digging down into the bottom layer of the fan here, we have the switch housing. This is what uh, Rick refers to as the TOC Minerva switch housing. Now this particular switch housing design dates to at least 1991. We have documented this being on NCON fans in 1991, and it may date back earlier than that. So it definitely goes back to the vintage era. Remember in 1991, Hunter was still making a four blade original, Fasco was still making the Charleston, and Casablanca was still making the Zephyr. So at the time that those fans were being produced on this earth, this was a valid switch housing in existence. So we are comfortable calling this a vintage style switch housing. The reason we went with this was we needed something large enough to hold all the electronics. We have an LED light driver. We have a pull and hold light dimmer. We have four speeds worth of capacitors. We need room in here for a customer to be able to add their own light kit. Um, and we also need room in here to accommodate neon electronics for the customers that want the neon in their fan. So we had to go with an extra large switch housing and this is that. We have the four inch down rod. Now, because most customers, of course, in America have an eight foot ceiling uh, and they're gonna be using this, it comes pre-attached with the down rod ball and the cotter and clevis pin. You would just remove those and attach them to the 12 inch down rod if you wanted to use that. The purpose of the, the 12 inch down rod, if you have a, a high enough ceiling to support this, which would be maybe nine feet, probably more, probably nine and a half or above, um, this will give you better CFM, better airflow. The further that you can move a fan off the ceiling, the better airflow you get. Now, the perfect, the ideal, the absolute best you can do is you want the distance between the ceiling and the blades to be equal to the blade diameter. Meaning for like a 52 inch fan, you want a minimum of 52 inches of clearance between the blade and the ceiling. That will give you the ideal airflow. There is no more airflow that you can get by dropping that fan any further off the ceiling. Now you need to have blades a minimum of seven feet above the floor for code and for safety. So for you to have a blade seven feet off the floor and you know 52 inches of, of space above that for airflow, you'd have to have you know uh, the 12 and a half, 13 foot ceiling almost. Most people don't have that. Most people are gonna wind up using this um, and for people that can't even fit this, we do have the flush mount option, but all of these options come with reduced airflow. The fan's airflow is rated at this down rod because it's the standard, but you will get increased airflow and CFM by using the longer down rod if you can. And if you have a high enough ceiling to support an even longer down rod, we do offer 18, 24, 36, 48 inch, all kinds of down rods, custom down rods. We can couple them together. We can do whatever you need. Uh, canopy and canopy trim ring right here. So the canopy and canopy trim ring together look very much like a Lasco TOC canopy from the 80s. If you're mounting with the down rod, then you snap the canopy trim ring into the bottom of the canopy and it hides those holes. It's purely aesthetic. If you're mounting without the down rod, doing the flush mount option, that goes in the garbage, this screws directly through those screw holes to the top of the motor housing so that you can flush mount the fan without a down rod. And again, the consumers out there, I'm telling you, you can, you shouldn't, because it's going to reduce your airflow. So if you have enough ceiling space to support using at a minimum the four inch down rod, do that. Your blades need to be a minimum of seven feet off the floor, so if for safety you need to flush mount, flush mount, but understand that with a 15 degree blade pitch and a flush mounted fan, it's gonna be fighting. It's gonna be struggling and you're gonna have reduced airflow. 
at the bottom of the box here is the pièce de résistance. We have the motor itself. So we got a big honking 188 by 20 millimeter spinner motor in there. Uh, this is what I like to call the salad spinner housing because that's what that roughly looks like to me. Now this housing design, this dates back to at least the early 1990s. King of Fans used this on a model called the Neon Illusions. Um, who else had that? Design House had that. Uh, the last time I saw this used was I think uh, 2005, Menards, turn of the century, did a, uh, a neon fan um, that was last sold off. Uh, whatever ones they didn't sell in the stores went off online on eBay somewhere around maybe 2008 or nine somewhere. Uh, but the production date on them was 05. That was the last time I saw that housing used. Now our version of this housing is different from all of the previous competitors. We have added this ribbed halophane design, which diffuses light and it spreads it around really evenly. It's a nice finish. Um, it matches very nicely with the rib pattern on the blades. They go well together. So right here is where you can mount the canopy directly to if you wish to flush mount the fan without a down rod. One of the cool upgrades on this fan versus the previous fan that we used, the Quorum Prism, all the electronics of this fan, the pull chains, the capacitors, everything here, is married to the fan itself not to the switch housing, so that uh, it's very easy for the customer to just pop the switch housing on, good to go. With the Quorum Prism, the electronics, the pull chains, the capacitors were all installed into the, uh, the switch cup itself. And there was a Molex connector coming off the switch cup and a Molex connector coming off the fan. The customer's got to put them together and mash all the wires in there and try not to pinch them and put it on. And it's a pain in the ass, especially for, you know, consumers that are not used to regularly installing fans the way we collectors are. So this is designed to be a little more consumer friendly to install. All three pull chain switches. We've got our uh, pull and hold dim unit here. All comes pre-installed to the fan. Now, the astute collectors among you will notice that we have an additional lead wire here. We have this, this red lead wire, the fourth lead wire. What's going on with that? So the white wire is, of course, neutral. The black is the hot for the motor itself, for the four-speed fan motor. The blue lead wire is the light wire for the internal built-in light kit. So in this case, it's the LED. Uh, if you opt for neon, it would be for the neon. The red lead wire passes directly through the fan and comes out the bottom in the switch cup. So these are the wires for a customer to wire up their own accessory light kit. If you wanted to uh, install, say, a, a schoolhouse globe fitter or a spotlight kit or whatever into the bottom of the switch cup here, you could uh, wire it directly to that. Now, if you have, you know, just one hot wire coming into your box, no wall switch, you will, of course, wire not all three of these together. But the purpose of that red lead wire is to give installation flexibility for customers that have, you know, one or two wall switches, maybe one of them's a dimmer. You can't use a dimmer on neon, but you can use it on the light kit that you install on here. So the extra lead wires allow the customer to wire up their fan however they need. Um, so let's talk about the specs on this fan. Here's a little cheat sheet for you. So this fan is in every way better than the Quorum Prism it replaces. Quorum's fan is a piece of garbage compared to this fan. So Quorum Prism comes with a 172 by 44 millimeter spinner motor. Our fan comes with a 188 by 20. So it's both wider and taller, considerably taller in that state of stack height. Um, in terms of power, Quorum Prism is a 60 watt motor. Our fan is an 80 watt motor, 33% more power. Quorum Prism comes with a 13 degree blade pitch and our fan with a 15 degree blade pitch on those custom Panasonic irons right there. The pathetic high speed of the Quorum Prism, 156 RPM on high. Our fan blows it out of the water, completely blows out of the water, 220 RPM. Let me tell you something, it has been years since a fan was made on this earth that did 220 RPM on high with a 15 degree blade pitch. And we pulled that off with a spinner motor. Now it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't free to do. It costs money to make a fan better like that, but it's not that much money and it's definitely worth it because anybody can build a cheap fan. Just go, go down to Home Depot, go to Amazon, buy whatever cheap shit fan you want. Go to Walmart. They specialize in cheap shit fans. We wanted a really good fan. So 
Um, in terms of airflow, the Quorum Prism, 5,080 on high. Our fan, 7,270. So that's more than 40%, it's about 43% more CFM on high. Um, now we're gonna put an asterisk by that number. That's the manufacturer's rating. The manufacturer who made this fan, they've got a test rig in their lab where they're able to hang the fan up and measure the CFM and measure the RPM. These are their numbers that they provided back to me. Now I'm paying extra for an independent third party lab to test this fan to verify all these numbers, make sure that the manufacturer is on the up and up and not bullshitting. So that number, we expect it to stay the same, um, but it is theoretically subject to change. Could be higher, could be lower, could be by an insignificant amount, could be off by five CFM or something that is a rounding error. But that's the best number that we have for now, 7,270 for high speed CFM on the Delray. Um, in terms of efficiency, the Prism 85 CFM per watt on high versus we got 91 out of the Delray. So we have a fan that moves considerably more air and is more energy efficient doing it. Um, then last is the choice of speeds. The Quorum Prism, you got a three speed pull chain. With the Neon Fan Company, you have a four speed pull chain. We give you that choice of an extra speed and sneak preview here. We do have a four speed remote control option in the works. So this is a sample prototype of what our four speed remote control will look like. The final version will have our logo printed here and the names of the speeds will change because on the Delray, the speeds are referred to as low, medium, high, and turbo. So this remote control will allow you to operate all four speeds of the fan. They are solid click buttons. They're not the soft, mushy kind. Um, but also will control the internal light kit. So that's the, what comes in the box with the Delray fan here. Um, in terms of the light that's built into it. So the LED that comes in the fan right now is 3000 K warm white, which is equivalent to a halogen incandescent bulb. The samples that I have here have a 10 watt LED in them, but the final production fans are actually, we're upping that to 15 watts. So the 15 watt version will produce 1,327 lumens, um, and that's between a 75 and 100 watt incandescent light bulb, closer to the 100 watt end. It, it's extremely bright. So the version we have now is 10 watts, is very bright. It is a little bit brighter than a 60 watt light bulb in terms of lumens, and it is, uh, it, it lights the room, it lights the room, great, it really does. And uh, we're gonna offer even more. So if you have a big room or a high ceiling, if you have a great room and the fan's way up there, we want you to get a ton of light out of this fan. Um, and then last but not least, the color rendering index is 92, which is very high. Uh, I was adamant with the manufacturer on that, that we needed the, a very high quality LED. People are gonna mount this fan in restaurants, they're gonna mount it over the dining table. The food needs to look appetizing. That's what CRI is all about. It makes human skin and food and everything look right and natural and healthy and appetizing and good. Um, it costs extra to do that, but it's worth it for a very high quality LED. So we got the high CRI LED in there of 92. Um, so this first production run of fans, they're all coming out of the factory with this same warm white LED. And customers will be able to buy that. That's gonna be the easiest, ready to go, base price, base model fan. You're gonna have two upgrade options for aftermarket upgrades. One is of course Neon. We're the Neon fan company, Neon's what we do. So you will have the option for, to have us uh, remove the built-in warm white LED and put real traditional glass neon like the Quorum Prism had inside of one of these fans. And we're gonna make that neon for you, whatever color you want. Um, the other upgrade option will be RGB full color LED. So if you want a dressable LED and you know, the kind of thing where you can make it whatever color you want, sync it to your phone, use an app, use a little remote control, um, we will have that as an option too. In the future, we may have the factory produce them that way. Um, right now, that's not currently an option with what they're set up to do. However, we're set up to do that. So we will offer that as an optional upgrade for customers who want it. Um, but at the end of the day, the average customer putting a fan in their house wants a, a warm white LED bulb that looks like a traditional household incandescent bulb. So that's the standard, the default that comes in this fan. Um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, anything you want to know about the Del Rey, about the Neon Fan Company, stick them below in the comments and I will be there to answer. So thanks for watching. Beautiful evening.